Controversy, constitutional questioning and some very tough talk. John Burko isn't known for mincing his words in the UK's House of Commons and now the Speaker of the House says he's calling it quits. Here's a look at Burko in action on Monday. It's about doing what Parliament wants, which is what most people would expect their elected Parliament to do. And uh, I don't require any help from somebody chantering from a sedentary position in evident disregard for the procedures of the House and the purport of the inquiry of the Honourable Gentleman. Let me say to people who are shouting their heads off, it will be readily obvious to people observing our proceedings that's exactly what they're trying to do, in including some extraordinarily stupid and noisy yelling from people secreting themselves behind the chair and stinking they're being clever. It's very low grade, it's very down market, it's very substandard, it's very boring, it's very predictable and if the whips operated any sort of discipline they would tell those people to try to get a life. Order! Order! Order, Mr. Philp. You're very loud and rancorous. Calm down, young man. You're getting very overexcited. Very, very overexcited. You are very, 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 very overexcited. Very overexcited. You can do a lot better than that. So you get the idea there and CNN's Bianca Nobolo sat down with Speaker Burko recently for an interview. She started by asking him about the different roles involved in being Speaker and the legacy he wants to leave behind. The best known and most visible function of the Speaker is to chair in the chamber, to chair Prime Minister's questions, to chair other debates, to chair the delivery of ministerial announcements. And in that capacity, I'm a referee. If the Speaker's the sort of person who is going to be cowed or intimidated by a ministerial rant or a letter sent by way of complaint, well, that person isn't fit to be Speaker. So I hope I always treat people with respect but I'm not going to be intimidated by some moaning minister in any government. What do you think are the greatest challenges that you face? There is a limited amount of time. You can't choose every topic. I have procedural advisers who guide me. What needs to be aired? What can be further teased out of the government if it's selected? Does an amendment, let us say, have a large number of signatories? And if so, that might make it worthy of selection. So those are challenges. I wouldn't say that they're fiendishly difficult or complicated, but they absorb one's energy. What can you do in your role as Speaker if the public are feeling disillusioned or perhaps disenfranchised by divisive politics? I suppose I would just encourage members, insofar as they need encouragement, to do what they think is right in terms both of voice and of vote. It's not for the Speaker, let's say in the context of Brexit, to prescribe one route or another. And I think the record shows that I've always been particularly keen, for example, to give a voice to the minority or dissident voices in the House of Commons rather than in any sense to side with the majority. I think the Speaker's role is sometimes just to stand up for the institution of the House of Commons and the principle of parliamentary democracy. There is a, a brighter spotlight than usual on Parliament at the moment. Does it concern you that the impassioned debate and inability to find consensus might be affecting how Parliament's seen around the world? It is a concern that in grappling with the biggest current issue facing us, Brexit, no resolution of the matter has yet been attained. It is a concern. It isn't something that the Speaker can determine. The Speaker can try to help the House to decide on such issues and give it the freedom to breathe, if I can put it that way. When the Commons is at its most boisterous, even raucous, how difficult is it to keep control? If somebody's going on too long, you sometimes just have to interrupt and say, Order! Order! The abridged rather than the war and peace version is what is required. We can't hear from the honourable gentleman at great length. And, and sometimes a member will say, oh, but my point's a very important point, Mr Speaker. And I say, yes, every point made in this chamber is important, but there is a limited amount of time available. Do you feel that weight of history when you conduct your daily duties? 
The truth is that it was a very perilous enterprise to stand for Speaker before the democratic age came upon us. That does enable me to view the woes and challenges which afflict and confront the House of Commons, and which, if all truth be told, Bianca periodically afflict and confront me. That is to say, whatever else happens to me, I'm not likely to lose my head. Bianca Nobolo talking there to who was the Speaker of the House there, Burko.